Good morning guys, how are you? Hope you're all well, and I hope you're all very safe. So here we are on my next update, which I think is update number four, is it? Update three um, of the Gulf Wars group build. So whereabouts are we now? Right, well, we have um, started the Bradley. Um, so I'll show you the Bradley now. The Bradley we've started, and basically all I can say so far about this kit is it's beautiful. Um, I've been ma mainly watching um, uh, Easy's um, build of when he did this this kit, and I've also been watching John John Moore's. Uh, video uh, thing of when he did John when John did his um John did the 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 kit which this actually is which um, is the M3A3 is the basic kit with pardon me sorry without the interior however I um I've got the interior bought the interior separate a few well last year sometime um so I'm doing like the full interior one for the for, for the build to go alongside the Abrams um fit not a problem whatsoever it's absolutely gorgeous um i can't say anything bad about it to be fair I'm just, i was trying to think of something before i started but i can't um it's got your workable suspension here with the uh, metal bars that you get like metal tubing um and it's, it's a bit like the dragon kit underneath here and um, this is actually a, 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 a the interior floor that you put down but it's a bit like a dragon kit where you've got the bars that come through um, and you stick them you know each side uh, to make them give you a bit of suspension it's a lot like the one I had on my uh, the um, Yag Panther the, the one of Zimmer I've done um, I have primed it and and it's like B said in one of his videos he, he it, it was new to him at the time because you're sort of building a part and you're having to paint it just after because of obviously the way it is um so i'm sort of building it then i'm taking it just to here at the side of me and priming it because i use me my go-to um surface primer at the minute while i've still got them i mean i do usually use uh these the the my gray ultimate primer stuff which is the best ever and um, but i do like this too so it just saves the hassle of having to clean your airbrush out and doing all that but i do like it but it place it hasn't really covered that well but you know i'm not too fussed uh, so that is the lower hull and the interior that's where the um let's get a little pointy sticky pencil there's the driver's compartment um, and this is where the engine will sit uh, the air conditioning unit and the transmission um, this is a crew bay at the back where it carries crew um, and then not crew sorry you know what i mean uh, soldiers uh, and then this is where the turret will be here, um, just there. Uh, it is, like I say, a beautiful kit. It's lovely. Um, so I am thoroughly enjoying it. And I'm surprised, to be fair, because uh, I was a bit dreading it at first, because we're doing the Ryfield's uh, uh, M1A1 Abrams with the full interior. That's taken a long, long time. And I've put it back in the box at the minute because of things that have gone on and whatever else I just don't feel like building it but with that interior as well it's quite you know very very time consuming so we say so um so we'll go on to this part this is the um upper hull exterior uh, interior sorry um these these bits here uh, are gonna I wasn't going to but I, um this is where it, the um, engine the uh, bonnet shall you say comes up and covers now, I wasn't going to attach these and have the bonnet open, but I was not going to stick it down properly. I was just going to leave it so you can just lift it up and have a look. But what I'm thinking of doing is, is I've actually stuck these down with white glue so I can take them off easily if, if needs be, if I don't, if I decide otherwise. Because when, I, when I'm building a kit with a full interior, I don't see the point in attaching you know, the upper to the lower hull because... All that time and effort that you're doing, I mean, okay, I know you can leave like the hatches open and that, which I intend to do for the driver's hatch and there, but you know, you can't really see it and get the thing. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually leave the, the, the top part unstuck. So, you know, it, it, while it's on the, the um, 
Dio base and that you can just come along if you want to and just have a good look you know lift it off and have a look at it and, and take note and that of it that's what I've done with the um, Abrams the Rafield Abrams too um, so what I'm thinking is now is I might just remove these and just put the bonnet down and stick it down because at the end of the day you're going to be able to see the engine anyway aren't you and I'm thinking if I do do I was going to have the, the, the bonnet up you see so and then rearrange the figures a little bit so it looks like two crew are standing here talking about the engine or something i don't know but i'm not sure yet i might still do it so that's uh, that part like i say it's really nice i love love the kit it's uh, not no no fit issues whatsoever so far so then we come into the little bits of the parts and um, this is your turret and um, uh, another little bit of uh, just trying to think if there is any photo etch already that i've done uh, oh yeah, there's a little bit, I'll show you in a minute. Uh, a little bit of photo etch there. Um, this is obviously uh, the, the lower part of the turret. Um, so you'll have the um, blast protection for the turret, is it, I think. Um, which goes underneath there. Uh, and I've done, there's a door that goes there. I don't know if you can see, but there's a door that actually goes there. Um, and you can have it closed or you can have it open. So I'm having it open um, because I'm going to have a guy standing in the turret. Um, just resting on the side. Um, again, it's, it's a beautiful detail, it really is. I mean, I don't know if you can 100% see that well, but uh, the detail is really, really good in there. You know, really is good. You've got your, your TV screen, you've got your joystick there to control it, and you, you know, you, you sort of, I'll just move that now, arms to, and wheels to turn the turret around. Um, so that's that bit. Uh, you've got the, the the wall that separates, which will fit here. The wall that sort of fits here, which goes um, separates the driver from the engine and transmission. So it goes there. It's quite a nice snug little fit. Uh, it's got its you know the uh, steering rod and your controls, uh, pedals. And then the doors, which is a shame in a way, because that would be quite nice if that would, could be open. But I suppose there's always so much you can do with a, a kit, and it is that good already that, like I say, you can't pick anything wrong with it. Um, then you've got your tow missiles, which go in here. I'm not Obviously, this isn't correct. I'm just sticking them on to show you where they go in the kit. Um, like so. They go all there, I believe. Um and then the first bit of photo etch was with the actual uh, air cooling system, uh, I believe it is, which is just the fan gr grills there, um, and that sort of sits, I think, again I haven't got the instructions with me at the minute, but I think it sort of goes there like so. so then you've got the, en is that the engine? Yeah, there's, that's the engine. Can't you tell I'm a very, um, you know, you're either rugby football and you're brought up with a ball and know nothing about engines and cars, or you're the other way around and know everything about cars and engines and nothing about ball sports and I was the ball sport type guy so I had to clue about these so I think that sort of goes sort of here bear in mind you've got that wall that protects them and then here is the transmission the level of detail though that has gone into this is really is something else it is excellent excellent it is um, and then of course that will sort of go I think Something like this here. So yeah, and of course it all, it all fits and goes in together and whatever else, you know. So yeah, so that's how it, how it will look. Um, and then of course you've got your little turret, bas turret to, um, explosion armour protection, whatever it is there. And of course your turret goes on top like so, like that. So yeah, um, all in all, it is beautiful so far. Oh, and you've got your little seat at the back where your um, soldiers in the back will be sitting and there's another seat I think that goes there so that's that um, the wheels are nowhere no different to what they were before when I showed you um, but they do come quite nice I mean there's it's, the tyres are separate which I've left separate because I'm going to paint them like that um, but you do get a wheel mask so if you have stuck them all together um, you can paint it all black or whatever you want to do or tie it black and then stick your mask on and paint the inserts um, 
So it is lovely done by Meng, but I've left them separate because I just think it's going to be a bit easier for painting and um, doing it that way. Um, so that's that. Uh, the stowage and that I've got is, um, this is the bit that B sent me. I'm, I'm still looking and knowing whether I'm going to use this yet. I've cleaned it up at the back so it fits perfect to the side. It is going to be like, you know, on the side like that of the Bradley. It is actually for the Warrior kit of... Um, Oh, fantastic! I found the part that I thought the carpet monster had last night. Superb! I'm happy about that. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, it's actually for the warrior, but um, I've checked through and had a good look at it, and there's nothing there that distinguishes uh, British sort of stuff to American stuff. So uh, equipment, you know. So I'm going to, I'm possibly going to use that, um, and then this is all the bits of stories I've got um, for the the kit. This is all like sort of. Um, uh, what's it, a company called that does all the stowage? I forgot the Ron Fog models. Um, I got that for my actual M10 tank, um, tank destroyer Second World War one, but it's not doesn't state it's a Second World War set, but it's all resin, so um, they're just tarps I'm going to use. Um, these are um, modern day um, ammo and, and weapons um, stowage set that uh, Bees again has sent me along, which I'm going to be using in the back of the um, or on top somewhere. Um, of the Bradley. This is a little um, hunch sack that uh, the soldier is sitting on in one of the scenes but again I'm if and annoying when I'm going to use that or stick it on a stowage. Um, these are the barbed wires that I'm going to add to the side of the tank or on the front of the tank um, which I've rusted um, using some of the um, metal burnishing fluid from AK um, and then I've just painted a bit of rust on um, and then of course just you extra sort of modern uh, ammo um, boxes and then your water cans and jerry cans and that and then um, obviously your cooler bottles or whatever that is I can't think what that is now it's gone out of my mind um, but that's actually out of the Ryfield uh, Abraham set so I've got quite a few of them so that's going to go in so that's all the um, storage for the Bradley so that's all up and ready raring to go um, just got to paint it all it's just all these little bits of painting that I get a bit drawn by you know um, the tracks are all cleaned up and ready to go. I assembled some on camera the other day for my track thing I did. There's actually a um, mask set I've got for that as well. It comes with a kit. The Abram stowage is much roughly the same as um, the um, set for the Bradley. Apart from I've just got a couple of the guns and that that I'll be using for the uh, set. For the, some of the figures, because some of the figures that I'm doing don't actually come with guns or weapons. So that's all that there. Um, the figures. Now this is where I have sort of come on a little bit with my figures. Um, most of them are base coated, apart from the Iraqi um, civilian and the sheep. So most of them are base coated. Now, I've been doing these bit by bit downstairs while I've been watching TV at night. Last night, I decided to try and crack on with the Bradley crew. And I've done, they're all done apart from Glossed now. Um, apart from just the commander guy that I have um, haven't done. Um, so I've done, I'm pretty chuffed actually. Here's the first one. I don't know how well you're going to see these, but there's your first one. He is um, a light skinned dude. Um, Again, he's got, uh, I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, but he's got brown sort of camouflage on his um, flat jacket. Um, and I've added like sort of a bit of a darker colour for the soles of the the, the boots. Um, yeah, I've used the AK um, skin set. Now, I normally always use um, AV Vallejo, the Vallejo um, model colour stuff for figures. But I've been, um, with my figure painting being awful... I just thought I'll have to give that one a go. So I've added a few highlights on him and his lips and his eyeballs and his pupils and that. So that's him done. Um, that's him. Now, the second one is this one I tried to have a go at. Um, sort of a mixed race uh, chappy. Um, I've done his teeth and he's all done basically. Uh, his gloves and I've given him sort of multi-coloured camo uh, bottoms. Uh, I don't know if you see that. They're not perfectly done. But again, I haven't blended them or glossed them yet. So... You know, the, the Glocks are done, 
um, and also the teeth and the eyeballs are all done on him. I was, to be honest, I'm quite chuffed with that one. Again, same sort of style with his boots I've done for um, him. I have done them the same of all of these. I've just tried to give them like this, the odd different colour, sort of different part of a uniform on each one. Um, this guy I'm quite chuffed with. Um, I've done his eyes, done his, um, his shadowing under his, under his neck with a different sort of flesh tone. Um, again, I've done his Glock, but with a different coloured pouch. Yeah, I think that's actually khaki. I've done that, I think. Um, again, I've done his boots. In fact, have I done his boots? No, I haven't done his boots. Oh, I have. No, I haven't done his boots yet. I've done his watch, and I've done a little pouch, the patch on the side of his... Um, there's his watch, sorry. And the patch. Um, and that's uh, going to... So I'm going to try and have a go at the American Stars and that for that. Um... But yeah, I'm quite chuffed with these so far. Um, you've always got to have a strawberry blonde or redhead, haven't you? So he's going to be the captain or commander's going to be like a, a red eddy guy. Um, but again, I've got to finish him. Um, the Iraqi, again, I don't know if the flesh tone's right or not, but, you know, it's okay. It's my first ever attempt at a sort of a mixed race sort of foreigner type chap. So, um, you know... I'm not going to beat myself up about it. Um, these soldiers here are the resting ones, or talking about what's happening. Um, he's the resting one for definite with a fag in his hand. This one is um, sort of sitting on that rucksack thing I showed you. Um, but I'm actually can't make my mind up now whether I'm going to have him actually sitting on the side of the tank, one of the tanks or something, while the other guys are standing up talking to him because he's he's obviously looks like he's got some sort of. Uh, like it, it on, on on the actual pack, it shows you is it's like a newspaper he's reading. But I'm going to add that like a map as though they're planning what's going to happen next and that. Um, these are going to have um, the uh, camouflaged with a bit of brown on a bit of green on now, um, for the uniforms and then that they will be near enough done. And just obviously got to do a bit of detail painting um, and add the marks on, and then of course the water bottles and whatever else. Um, down the side, but again, they're coming on. These these are all airbrushed. The base coat for it. Um, my favourite one out of the lot uh, is this assault models um, guy, Marine. Awesome it is. I've had some trouble with the end of the gun kit coming off, so I've had to super glue it. Now, I can remember from from myself being there, but also um, from pictures I've had a look at as well, just to confirm. A lot of Marines uh, over there it sometimes went out with them. Um, like different coloured uh, uniforms, so they'd have green bottoms, um, which I know is mainly for. I think they used to use them mainly for uh, if they like were going on uh, an assault, like um, taking them um, if uh, an oil rig had perhaps been taken or something like that. So they go on with that. It's, I think they're sort of uh, fly bottoms or something like that. I think they're called. But the detail on this guy is untrue, so it's going to be quite difficult to paint as well. But that's how he's going to be with them um, sandy sort of boots on um, and they're going to be painted and everything but up here is, is going to be how it is um, but I'm going to put like the bits of green on so he's got camouflage uh, tonal for his, um, his jacket and that and then obviously do the gun and the helmet the sheep I haven't a clue about black or white I, don't, I really don't know what I'm going to do with him yet uh, I'm thinking I'm going to do him flat black um, and then go over him um, uh, dry brush him to bring the detail out with uh, perhaps uh, rubber and tyres, the MIG one, because it's a lot greyer than the, the MIG one is to um, the Tamiya one. So that might bring out some nice colour. So that's the figures. Um, and then, of course, last bit at the minute, oh, well, first to last bit is just the Abrams is exactly the same as you saw before. Um, I haven't changed anything. Uh, because obviously it's done and I'm quite happy. I know I've had comments about the bottles are upside down and, and whatever else. To be honest, that's up that, that you know, the mistakes happen and I, I went through that much trying to stick the pissing Tammy tape around there. I, I can't be arsed as it is. It's, I'm happy with that. Sorry, but that'll do me. So there's that. And then the final little bit I want to show you before I go on to all the other stuff is the actual Dio base. Now you'll have to excuse me here because I can't turn it around or anything so what I'm going to do is is I'm going to actually move the camera guys so I'll just hold on for a sec okay right sorry for the blurtness right so here 
I'm quite chuffed because a lot of times I can remember over there as well, there is greenery in Iraq. People keep saying no there isn't, but there is. Um, so the only bits of greenery that I had were the sticky downy stuff. So the best thing I could do is, is I've put it down and then like I sort of like gone over it with a bit of buff. The walls I've added now, I'm quite happy with. I've picked out the odd bit of stones just to give them a bit of colour variation. Pigments on top. I've added a bit of rust down there um, to the wall where the, the barbed wiring is. And I've also added a bit of streaking. I don't know if you can see there. Down there. That was all done with oil. Again, I've added a bit of, just so it gives it a bit more character with the bars coming through um, the walls you know where they go over it i've added um, pigments again like concrete and dust and all that that's a bit of um, scratch built um, out of dash clay uh, rubble and all that type of thing uh, and then again all this has been done with um, vallejo pigments which is the desert dust and the mig uh, gulf wall sand and the stones are out of my back garden but again, I've um, added a bit of foliage on them um, just to give it a bit more different detail. Um, again, uh, where the tracks are going on this sort of main sort of road. And then I've scratch built, which are an awful attempt at the minute, but they're not too bad, I suppose, me. Um, pillars, shall we say. Uh, I've added a bit of metal wiring around the backs of them. And then this is just basically bead wire um, because I didn't want to... Uh, normal metal wire because again research pictures in that show that it is totally diff they are looking a bit thicker um over there and then of course i just added like the um, wooden fences out of coffee stirrers i've broken them up painted them with um uh, oil colors uh, rust colors actually they were done um i've also added down here where the foliage is is a bit of the um AK's uh, decay deposit stuff and also the slime green stuff because obviously it does rain and when it does obviously you know there will like be bits of um, stuff that will rub off on the posts I've dusted the posts I don't know if you can see that well um, I've added dust to them I've just basically sprayed the gunner with the buff added it a lot thicker down the bottom where obviously um, cars and stuff will be coming flying past and then obviously flicking up and all that type of thing so that's all that done um but yeah all in all i am to be fair i'm never happy with your work are you never ever but for once i am actually quite happy with this bit of work um this was another wall i wasn't originally going to add but i've added it just for i thought this wall here just looked a bit lost so I thought, bugger it, I'll add another wall. Again, I've added a bit more of the decay and greenery down the bot bottom there, but you can't really see because of the light. Um, but yeah, it's okay. Right, I'm just going to stick you on pause, guys, while I set the camera back. Okay, guys, we're back. Right, sorry about that. So let's move him out of the way. That's just a different angle, just so you can see the fencing up there. Um, but yeah, I'm quite chuffed with that. It's not too bad. Now then... I'm just going to do a couple. Um, one shout out is going to uh, Tiger Tank 2. Um, he's got some great work on there and um, you really do want to check his channel out. It's all one word, Tiger Tank 2. Um, with basically all the, the T's in the Tiger Tank 2 are all capitals. But check him out guys, some fantastic work. Um, and it's, there's really good stuff he does. Um, right, a couple of tips I'm going to do, give you. Right, the first one is... is a lot of guys, when they're trying to blend modelers, when they're trying to blend like the colours in and make them all um, looking all the same, you know, so, like not all the same, but you know what I mean, like they put a filter on and then a, a couple of washes and then uh, use a bit of oil colours, whatever, to try and, you know, blend the and make it all look a bit lotsy. Now, a lot of guys will have these in their paints, but there is another way that you can actually do them, and they are these little babies. The clear range of um, Tamiya colours. Um, they're very, very good. Uh, I've done it before, so to give it sort of perhaps a, a bit of a more warmer, in-depth look, um, is give it a light spray over with the red or both of those two together. Um, under the where you want it to give it a few shadows and whatever else you use, obviously the darker colours. But also as well, one good 
product that is good for weathering like oil streaks and, and that type of thing is the smoke colour and um, obviously turn your airbrush or your paint whatever you, especially your airbrush turn it right down the pressure and then obviously you can drag it down and it, and it does work and it's, it's really good so it saves like sometimes if you um go not very good with say like some of these AK stuff you know the the washies or whatever else and um, these are excellent to use uh, for blending for basically blending as a lot of the things you can use them for but also weathering as well they are very very good and um, so there's another tip i found out i did a bit of research on these and, and found that you can actually use these they're extremely good and um, also another way for you guys that like your tamiya extra thin now a lot of you guys will probably know this whereas um I, I've, I've used this a few times but i've just asked a few got you guys out there um and uh and that if uh, how would you debond something that's stuck together like um, tank tracks you've put on the wrong way or something like that well look no further um than your tam here extra thin okay so we know that it's um it it uh, melts the plastic together um you know and it's very very good for that type of thing so we know it's a very versatile paint uh, glue so it's very good okay it stinks as well but it, it, it is good now then um, it, it's also good for getting rid of fingerprints on the side of your tanks and, and vehicles and that so if you made a fingerprint with it just go back over it with the, the fingerprint you've made with the brush and um, very lightly and it'll get rid of the thing now then look this is solid it's stuck together now then this is what you can do to debond stuff you just watch this now not work i can guarantee it it's not going to work because i want to now okay gonna probably damage a bit of the paint and whatever else okay but give it a few minutes to work and it also depends on obviously how solid the you've used i mean it does actually work as well on um super glue i've tried it and it does work on super glue so just a tad bit like i say give it a chance to work okay simple i'm not even going to put much pressure on there you go, debonded. Okay, so you guys out there don't know that, um, and you, you've made a, a, a mistake with sticking them two together by mistake, or your tracks you've put on the wrong way, or a piece on a tank that's um, <clears throat> you've done wrong, or whatever. There you go, simple way. It doesn't make a massive issue, and it doesn't damage the part neither. Um, and if you're quick enough, um, you can now stick it the proper way that you want to do it, because the glue's still wet, and there you go, job's done. But be very careful that like these um, ammo boxes here are actually being painted so it will remove the paint where you're around and even if you've um, given it a good gloss coat it can also uh, affect that too. So there's my second tip of the day for you guys. All of you are probably shouting down the camera now saying I know that. Give us something that I don't know. Um, the other thing I did is uh, to get some decent wood um streaking and, and a decent wood effect and look was um rust oils uh, dark rust and light rust and uh, that's how i did those uh, wooden um telegraph poles and then what i did is i got an old brush and sort of tried to separate the bristles like so um so they're not and then all i did is just dipped it in the thing in the um, paint and then just lightly dabbed a bit off on the tissue and then lightly just dragged it down like so on a piece of wood um, and then of course let it dry a little bit and then get another brush just slightly blend just now and again especially with the oils because it's so versatile and jobs are good and so there's another little tip so obviously the tips I'm giving you guys most of you probably know a thousand times over um, but I'm just thinking if the guys out there that are just starting out or whatever else and want some little, little tips on that uh, again a lot of people didn't know that about don't know that about the glues and stuff and again go over the last one of course i told you about and um, when it gets right down to the very bottom of the um uh, bottle and you can't get there because the brush if you get some decent pliers um, and then of course it won't work now because I, I want it to but the brush actually comes out the bottom so you can actually extend it like so and then there you go, you've got it right down to the bottom and you've got job done, jobs are good and you've got all that uh, glue that you can use at the bottom. So there's the, another, the, the other tip I gave the other day for you guys that have just started following me or whatever else. 
anyway guys that's it it's a bit of a long-winded one i'm thoroughly enjoying this same um, build it's great um, and i'm glad to see some so many guys taking part now as well um hope you're all well i hope you'll stay safe guys and may the force be with you